Good evening. This is Mash It and Smash It, but you can call me your ghost host. <laughs> anyway, happy Halloween, everyone. Guess what my costume is? I'm a floating head! Ooh! You know, you try finding a decent costume when you don't even have a body. The only other one I found was... But I don't intend to scare you that much. So, now that we're all dressed up for the holiday, let's celebrate it by talking about a scary cartoon series. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Created by John R. Dilworth, this show aired on Cartoon Network from 1999 to 2002 after the pilot episode that aired in 1996. It focuses on a dog named Courage, who lives on a farm in the middle of nowhere. No, seriously, that's the name of the town. With a cruel and grumpy old farmer, Eustace Bag, and his kindly wife, Muriel. The trio frequently encounters a variety of monsters, psychopaths, and supernatural forces, and it's up to Courage to stop them in order to save his owners. Or at least Muriel. Of course, the easily memorized opening of the show sums it all up even better than I could. But out of fear of having this video get hit with a copyright strike, I think I better avoid showing it in full. So yeah, the show does have a pretty simple formula. Simple, yet effective. The concepts of each episode is a lot like something you'd see in a horror film, with some goofy comedy to offset the scary stuff, at least a bit. And let me tell you, there are some weird episodes. I mean, really weird. Some of them, I wonder if the writers were heavily intoxicated while writing them. In fact, screw it, they probably were. But each story makes for some imaginative situations with plenty of great comedy and some occasional scares. And not just campy scares, I mean, there are some legitimately creepy moments in this show. A lot of it can be attributed to the animation. While the show mainly consists of 2D animation, which is simple yet impressive enough, it occasionally mixes it with other animation styles, such as live action, claymation, and CGI. This makes way for some of the creepiest characters to appear on the show, such as its infamous portrayals of King Ramses, the girl with the violin, and the spirit of the Harvest Moon, among quite a few others. Though that's not to say that creepy characters can't also appear in 2D as well, with one of the most infamous antagonists of the entire show being Freaky Fred. Naughty. The world is campy yet surreal. It perfectly mixes the themes of both horror and comedy. There's always an eerie vibe to it, but with enough silliness to make it bearable for the kids watching. Courage, as the title suggests, is quite easily scared, which certainly isn't helpful when dealing with all the creatures he's put up against. That said, his name isn't exactly inaccurate either. I mean, really think about it. The virtue of courage isn't necessarily the inability to feel fear, but the ability to stand up to those fears. And this dog does that a lot. He has pretty much made it a point to protect Muriel at all costs. And Eustace too, if it's convenient. As he constantly says, The things I do for love! And yes, he does talk. Very occasionally. With this level of devotion, such a well-defined character, and plenty of slapstick humor as well, it's really no question whose show this is. I think it's virtually impossible to pick anyone else as my favorite character of this cartoon. Muriel's quite well-defined as well. She cares for Courage just as much as he cares for her, and even finds some moments to stand up against the villains. Her kindness is a clear part of who she is, as shown on multiple occasions. That said, she's not really all that bright, since she's constantly oblivious to a lot of the things going on, including some obvious dangers that apparently only Courage can see. Of course, she's Einstein compared to her husband, Eustace. While he's just as oblivious as his wife can be, more often than not, he's the one who gets them into trouble in the first place, whether it be his stubbornness, greed, or other selfish motives. Needless to say, there are some episodes where he ends up being the villain. But whatever the threat is, he usually gets some comeuppance at the end of each episode, finding himself in an irreversible situation where he may be transformed or otherwise in some kind of trouble. Honestly, it's enough to make you question why Muriel didn't divorce him years ago. 
That said, very occasionally he might show some level of humanity. It probably doesn't help that he was seemingly abused his whole life by his even nastier mother and bullying older brother, while his father seemed to neglect him. Anyway, while he's overall quite entertaining, I guess I'll have to give him the obligatory least favorite character title, since his selfishness can go a little too far sometimes. And there's plenty of other notable recurring characters, such as the snarky and sarcastic computer, the hilariously incompetent Indian stereotype Dr. Vindaloo, the grumpy yet often helpful fortune teller Shirley, and Dai Lung. You know, that Chinese guy who says, Watch where you're going, you fool! And then, of course, we have a wide variety of villains and antagonists. This show is a fine example of the villain of the week trope, but it also has several recurring bad guys, most notably the sadistic cats, the shifty Lequack, and the chicken from outer space, which made its first appearance in the pilot episode. While we don't really get to know any of these baddies that much, they still make for effective challengers for our canine hero. I guess I should talk about this show's running gags, like when Eustace scares Courage with that big green mask, which is usually followed by the gag where Muriel hits Eustace with a rolling pin, leading to him saying, What did I do? Then we have Courage trying to warn his owners of some incoming danger, which he does using pantomime and, well, shape-shifting. He also has a bag that he can pull from thin air and find whatever would be useful to him at the moment. Just keep telling yourself, it's only a cartoon. Suspension of disbelief in this show is about the same as it is in Looney Tunes. But anyway, these gags are staples of this show and always succeed in what they're going for without overstaying their welcome. And then there are the catchphrases. Aside from the pre-mentioned the things I do for love and watch where you're going, you fool, there is a variety of repeated quotes. To the point that they often recycle the same voice clips. In fact, more than halfway through the show, Eustace's original voice actor passed away and was replaced by another one, but they continued playing clips from the original voice when he said various recycled quotes, most notably his catchphrase and the most famous line of the whole show, STUPID DOG! But I guess that goes to show how good the replacement was at sounding like the original voice. But most importantly, what makes this show so strong is the amount of heart poured into all intended emotions. It is kind of a love letter to all sorts of stories, mainly horror, but also other genres like sci-fi, fantasy, and suspense. And when it goes for scary, it really goes for scary. Of course, it's not complete without the many laughs thrown into the mix. And it can even do pretty well in the drama department. Granted, it never goes full-blown serious, but there are some episodes that manage to evoke some tears, bringing some sad moments and some very uplifting moments. All of these emotions are brought together with plenty of entertainment. At the end of the day, it's the entertainment that serves as the glue that brings this whole show together. If I were to criticize anything, it would be that this show doesn't go as big as it could. I can't quite explain it. It might just be because there aren't as many memorable characters to latch on to. Courage himself is pretty much the only one. I watched this show when I was entering my adolescent years, and while I enjoyed it, it didn't leave as big of an impression as other Cartoon Network shows at the time, like Dexter's Laboratory, The Powerpuff Girls, and Ed and and Eddie. Maybe I was just the wrong age. I was old enough that all of the infamous scares in this show didn't really scare me. I acknowledged that they were pretty creepy, but I was too busy being fascinated by the claymation, CG, and live action to really get that freaked out. This show and Spongebob Squarepants were the only two I knew of at the time that did this kind of thing so often. As strong as it was overall, there's probably a reason it didn't quite resonate with people as much as other shows did. All that being said, I appreciate it a lot more as an adult, and find it to be one of CN's all-time best. There really was no other cartoon like it. Before we go, I guess I should address the CG special that aired a few years ago, and the possible reboot. The special was good, I liked the story, and it did bring back enough of the old show's charm. That said, I think the new animation style does leave a little to be desired. Not that I don't like it, just that the timing doesn't seem as strong as what the 2D animation had. Same goes for Eustace's new voice replacement. For those of you who don't know, Eustace's second voice actor retired before they made the new cartoon, dying some years later, and was replaced by actor Wallace Shawn. And yes, when I heard they had a different voice, my reaction was as follows. Inconceivable! 
Sean did all right, but he too seemed to lack the comedic timing that the previous voices had. But hey, I know that technology advances over time, and actors are certainly not immortal, so I can't fault it too much. And yes, I really would be eager to see the potential reboot, even if it's not as good as the old show. Maybe they'll up the animation a bit to make it a little more true to the old show while still embracing the advancement of animation technology. I also hear that they're planning to cast Brian Doyle Murray as Eustace, who I think might be a good choice for the part. And even if the show is completely different from before, as long as it retains the same level of heart and creativity, which I have no doubt Dilworth still has in spades, I think it should still be a worthy follow-up to the original. But until we know for sure what lies in the future for this series, we can continue to look back on its past and see just how excellent it was. While it may not have the strongest impact compared to other cartoons, it is still one of the most unique and passionate, with a bizarre yet imaginative world, a small yet strong cast of characters, and a whole lot of scary, silly fun. If that kind of stuff is your cup of tea, then this show is a must for you. I'm giving Courage the Cowardly Dog a 9 out of 10. This is Mash It and Smash It wishing you a happy Halloween. And remember... You cannot escape your emotions. <laughs>